All right. So let's see. To start out today with any injuries. So we have uh, Rodney Adams will be out uh, for personal reasons today. Um, Michael Joseph broke his thumb in the game. Ryan Nall had a chest, uh, has, has a chest, so he will not practice today. Robert Quinn had an ankle in the game. Uh, back will be Artie Burns, Tayshawn Gibson, Marquise Goodwin. And other than those names right there, there's no changes to any other statuses that, that we've given you. Today will be a shells practice. Um, coming off of a couple days here with, uh, with the game. So we'll get back at it and uh, have some good football practice today. Coach, in the spring, even after the draft, it was pretty clear that this was not a traditional open quarterback competition. Andy was the starter, Justin was going to be his backup. Is that still the case, or has Justin worked his way into a spot where he could realistically be your week one starter? Yeah, it is the case. And I think for us to focus on you know the day by day and just kind of everything that goes into it. The only thing that those guys care about right now is just being great at that position. And I think if you ask all three of them, that's what they're trying to do. And, and then I, I'll always go back to um, just making sure that we all, when we evaluate those, those guys at that position, um, we're evaluating the entire package, right? And I think, um, you know, Andy had six plays and yeah, there's, it's hard to, it's hard to say much good or bad about that with the six plays. So we're gonna get him some more snaps. Uh, this coming preseason game. Um, and then with Justin, I go back to what I said too. Like we want to be able to see live plays, li live situations. We got that and he did a great job. So the only thing he can do is con to continue doing that. And then we got to make sure that that plan allows us to evaluate um, how well he does knowing those circumstances. And, and again, ultimately in the end, you know, whatever is best for the Chicago Bears is, is in the end what we're going to do. Yeah, and that being said, it, it, is there a point where, as part of the plan, there is value to getting Justin reps with guys like Allen Robinson, starters that he hasn't had a ton of yet? I, I think that that's real. I think you need to uh, look into that, and you need to be able to see, okay, um, not even so much Adam to see that with his own players, because he gets some of that in practice right now. He's getting some of that. But, it, but also it can be good to see what he does versus the, the, the first team defense. You know, so when you combine both of those together, that's again kind of part of the evaluation process. Is you know, there's there's zero scheming that's going on right now in these preseason games. Zero. There's there's nothing. There's not a lot of tape watched. There's plays that are called to see if people can win one on one, can they or can't they? And so that part's that that's that balance of trying to figure that out. And we want to see the strengths of these players when they're playing. So so yes, I'd say a little bit of that with his own players. And then also who he's playing against. So it'll be more in practice against the the number ones for for Fields. Yeah. So you know he's been uh, for for him. What we've been doing rep wise is we've been able to kind of manipulate the reps where he's able to with the offense get some of the ones with some of the guys when they're in there for the offense, um, which means he's going against some of the ones on defense when it's not live, and and that's just something that's part of the plan and. Um, the more that we can get of that and just be able to kind of evaluate and get in and out of the huddle. Um, now, we've had some guys out, too. Like, even in the preseason game, there's some guys that aren't playing that are, you know, the A-Robs and the Marquise Goodwins and stuff. So it's all a little bit of a moving, moving pieces with that. But the only thing that these guys can do is just try to go out and ball out. And I think that, you know, when the, Justin had a lot of plays, and he did a great job in those plays he had. Matt, with, uh, with just the first few questions here, does this become a, a cha bigger challenge for you to manage now with all the field type and the questions and just even maybe your own players wondering who the best quarterback is? No, because it's, you know, it's expected. You've got to play the situation and just understand, okay, this is uh, – the, the excitement is there. And we all – I'll go back to we all want him to play really well. Like that's a, that's a good thing is, is for him to go out and play well. Uh, at the same point in time, we knew going into this that – um, in this situation that any time there's, there's something that goes wrong for a guy like Andy in this situation, you know, th that's going to be there if Justin's playing well. Um, but, no, this is something that we've, we've planned for, prepared for, and we, we want to make sure. And, and, again, Justin understands all of this. And I, that's what I love about him is he understands the plan. He, he understands the process. They all do. And he, we, we asked him to go out and play well on game day live, and he did. 
Eddie, you said uh, like a week ago you wanted him to get to his check downs quicker in terms yeah. of, you know, from, from for his reads. Did you see some of that come to fruition? I, I, the Dolphins? I did. There was, um, you guys remember the one play early on, we were backed up in one of those first two series where we had the back to back penalties and we got inside the, the five or it was like the eight yard line. And um, he had Damian Williams on a check down. Uh, we had some vertical routes going, and he, Damian was a check down. And he had him right away. I think he lost vision. I would have loved to see him get to Damian right away and check it down. Instead, he pushed up and out and then threw it sidearm to Damian and got the same result. So that would be one an example there. Um, another example that he did a good job was at the end of the second quarter with, with limited time left where he, he stayed within the progression. He checked it down to Herbert, and Herbert did what we asked him to do, which is get your butt out of bounds. He did that twice. And he's, you know, Coach Flip and I were talking the other day. That was one of Coach Flip's favorite plays of the game was him staying in rhythm with his feet top down and not panicking. And he simply, when you watch his eyes, you know, he went, he went to the, the, the post route. And then in his progression, he just slightly moved his eyes and his feet down to Herbert, gave it to him, and trusted Herbert to get out of bounds. That's not easy to do. A lot of guys will scramble, run around, waste four seconds, and throw the ball away. He did it. He stayed within his progression. Um, so I think that that's, he's growing in that area. And he, he knows it, too. He says, Coach, i got to try to check the ball down some, too. And on the, the touchdown pass to Jesse, what struck you about how well that play unfolded? And uh, obviously, I, any of us could have probably thrown that for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, we, we, pro we, we probably could have. Um, that's what you, you like. You know, you, when you put those plays together, you know, it's nice to have some easy ones. And um, we talk about clinic tape. Those guys executed that play to perfection. I mean, everybody did their job from, from the center coming back and pulling and protecting Justin, Justin's footwork on the 12 steps, you know, uh, the Jesse James going down the line of scrimmage and just being slow enough, the, the running back getting his width and getting to the red line, Lacey taking two with the corner and the safety, eyes down the middle, and then boom, there he is wide open. Now, the hardest part of that play is when you all are cheering and you see him wide open, and that ball's staying in the air for like 10 seconds, and Jesse's got to catch it. So that's the hardest part of the play, and he did it, and he told me it was easy and then, you know, scored. So th those are the fun plays. What have you learned about Jesse over the last month? Super bright, smart, um, willing to learn, lots of experience, understands um, how he fits in this offense. He's very valuable. He can do a lot of things, and uh, we trust him. So, you know, he creates a lot of depth for us there, and, and, uh, and he's been a great, great addition to the room. Now, what's the timeline with Jason Peters? As of this second, I don't think he's on your active roster. Yeah, I don't know yet. I think they're they're working through all that. But in the next couple of days, I'll probably know more as far as when and, and everything. But, um, you know, we're we're looking forward to it. I know he is too. And, um, and again, they'll be, you know, we'll have to uh, get him going, see where he's at and everything. But uh, it, it's been, it was good talking to him. What did you think about how the offensive line played? Really well, you know. Now, they, uh, that was probably one of the biggest things we talked about as a staff was just, you know, did you, you didn't really see a whole lot of, of, of touches or hits on those quarterbacks. I mean, not, not really. Um, so that there is, is really good. I mean, they, they, were, they were doing some games up front, not a lot, but some games, and we passed it off pretty well. I didn't feel a lot of penetration back into the quarterback's throws. That The one we had was uh, the one Foles had, um, we had our right tackle get pushed back a little bit. Um, but other than that, they played well. And I think that was something that we were all looking forward to seeing. And they came out um, playing a good game. So we want to keep that going. Will you be treating this week's game or next week's game kind of the traditional dress rehearsal for the regular season? Um, it's, it's, it's not – because we lose that fourth game, I don't have what we did before. Uh, so what I would say is this week what you can plan on seeing is – probably a little bit more of, of the starters. Now that's individually, right, because of kind of some of the places we're at with these guys. I would say Andy will play uh, a little bit more, um, but we're still going to try to get as many reps as we can for Justin um, and when and how that goes. You know, we, we lost the possession in the first half with they got the ball. So we, that, you know, we tried to get a possession at the end of the half and then we knew we were coming back in the third. But uh, Andy and some of those starters will play a little bit more. And then, but we still have to get Justin going with those reps. Do you, do you game plan at all this week? You, you had mentioned earlier that in these preseason games. It is, it's very minimal. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we're working on, on stuff. I mean, we, we, we have some. I mean, there's some because, we, you know, these, these fronts change and then the, the back ends change. But 
it's not it's not even close to what you would do for a regular season game. I'm interested. What was your uh, opinion on Khalil Herbert's game? You mentioned it briefly about him catching that uh, pass from Justin Fields and having a little yards after catch. How would you evaluate his performance? He's uh he's really caught my attention. I think he's somebody that uh, again you talk about the word trust. He hasn't made many mistakes as a rookie. Uh, you know he's he's very very smooth. Um, when he gets the football, you can see the burst that he has. He's always going to go forward with yards. I just really like where he's at right now. I think that running back room in general is 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 playing their tails off, and Coach Petrie's doing a great job working with those guys. Hey, with uh, with with uh, Tevin, did did you guys consider putting him on pop to start camp? No, no. Again, it's it's uh, you know, his whole deal is is continuing to just work every day to just try to get back to where he can, but that has not come up. Are you able to learn anything about him just in the classroom right now, just doing some of the film stuff? Maybe you'll see the way, what he can gain from that. Yeah, the, the biggest thing for him right now is just staying invo heavily involved when he can in those meetings, which I know he is. And, and then same thing like we talked about the other day, when you're out there practice, making sure you're staying involved with the, the protections and, and the different things going on. And um, it's a little different with an O lineman. I know there was a comparison the other day about him versus Eddie with the script. It's a little different with the O lineman. He's been he's been doing a great job. And again, somebody that's motivated wants to do everything he can to to, to get better so he can play. Physically, what's he able to do at, at this point? Because earlier we saw him do some stuff on the side, but it hasn't been. I think the same. Yeah, same stuff. I mean, nothing's nothing's changed with him. We're just again, just it's a process and. We're all we all want to make it happen sooner or later, but I, you know, Dre and our doctors are working with them and and just trying to stay as positive as they can with them and, and just you know, day, really honestly, day by day. You said nobody schemes in like the first preseason game. So with that in mind, what did you see offensively uh, that uh, is was there anything that translates to week one success? Was there anything that happened that that for you as a coach see as hey that that. You know, that's a long-term benefit. Yeah. Well, I would say what don't do is don't have those penalties we had early on. You know, that's uh, the first couple drives that we had. Um, we had those slant routes over the middle. They just played press man, and we have to win on that. And and um, and they, they, they play good defense. So, again, there's not a lot of scheming with those third down calls. It's just we're kind of playing some plays that we have. But uh, so that's kind of there. But when, when, um, when Justin came in, uh, we had the – in and out of the huddle with the – we had a false start. I mean, Justin even had the one, if you look at it, he went and said, set hut, and he moved, he, he false. They didn't call the other guy. They were going to call it on Justin. So little things like that. we got to eliminate those. We can't go backwards. And we, we just – we got to get some first downs and get going. We just had no rhythm in that first half. But um, you always want to establish the run game, be able to work your play actions. and But just stay away from the, the, the discipline stuff, the dummy stuff. You know, be smart. Yeah, as a coach, man, two more guys who reach out to um... – Sean and say, McDermott say, can you throw in a disguise next week? Can you throw something in just to like a little wrinkle? Oh, I'm sure he will. We we talked. We were we were our partners our first round at Tahoe, so we talked a little bit out there some of the stuff that's going on. And we were just kind of going back and forth on what we were going to do, you know, in the game and everything. But even at that point, things were fluid for him too. You know, he was still trying to think what he was going to do with his guys. So it's a new. It's this, this, I mean, I was just setting some of the schedule last night. Like, things are different, man, this year with the schedule. So we're all kind of working through it, and I think it's all to each their own. You've talked a lot, you've talked a lot since you've been back for training camp about being calm, Yeah. having this calmness. And I want to know when in the off season and how did you arrive at that point amid so much uncertainty about what this season's going to be? Yeah, um, I can't put a specific day or point to it when it, it just kind of sort of happened. I'd say um, probably more than anything over the summer, over the summer. Uh, the, the very first time that I really felt it probably was our very first day of OTAs. When I saw that offense, I saw almost everybody on that offense show up for that very first day. That's when it first hit me. And then as the, the rest of the time went on, and you start thinking through where we're at and how we got to this point. Then I got to the summer, and you just start thinking about, you know, the time it's taken to, to get to where we're at and how we've done certain things. And we've had highs, we've had lows, we've been calloused mentally and physically, you know. And then how do I, how do I try to get better on my end, and where can I get better from a head coaching perspective, you know? And as I started thinking about all that, and I started thinking about the people that I have around me, the, the players, the coaches, the support staff, 
that's when the calm started happening. And um, it's nice to have that. It really is. And it is, it's, um, it's something that I'm going to continue to, to, to stick with, and I believe in it. Can I ask you a follow-up to that? Yeah. How does that compare or contrast with how you felt coming into the 2019 season when you're coming off so much success? Yeah, it, it, was, it was different. Um, the, the 18 season, a lot of things happened, and uh, I think this team b- built belief and trust in each other. And then, then that word expectations creeped in. Everyone's talking about the Super Bowl, this and that, and that's the worst thing that could have happened. And what, where, where I got it, where I wanted to improve and be better is not let us listen to those distractions outside. When you listen, it doesn't means nothing. So we learn from that, and I think that's where all these three years have gone by for me. I've been able to use those experiences to help me be calm.